Hello, welcome to this lesson of the AC Analysis Tutor. Here we're finally going to get some practice with phasers. We're not going to solve circuits yet. What we're going to do in this lesson is uh, write down some sinusoid functions, convert them to phasor notation so you get some practice with that. Also, we'll take some phasers and convert them back to the time domain so you can get some flavor and some practice with how to do that. And truthfully, I could have probably just introduced phasers by just telling you they exist and starting to do these problems. But I do think that going through what we talked about last section um, really drills it in at least sort of where it comes from and why it's important and a little bit of the theory. Um, everything we learned in the last section is great for you to know, but really your skills are going to be in this section. That's what we really need to make sure you understand how to do in order to solve problems. So um, what if I had um, some voltage? V is 170 times the cosine of 377T minus 40 degrees and that is in volts. And what if I said write the phasor notation of this? Okay, very, very simple to write the phasor notation. All you have to do is say capital V, right? That's the capital means phasor representation of whatever I'm talking about is it's an amplitude which is right here given to us already, right in front of the cosine, at an angle of whatever the phase is, negative 40 degrees. And you put the unit as volts. This is the shorthand way. If your professor or whatever tells you, write the phaser, that's all they want to see. They want to see the amplitude and the phase. You put this little bracket to illustrate that this is the phase angle there. Notice we don't write the frequency down at all. It is important. The frequency is very important as we analyze circuits, but what you're going to find is that, um, as I said before, the current and voltage anywhere in the circuit is going to have the same frequency as this, which is 377 radians per second. That's the angular frequency. So what we do is we convert the source to a phaser. We also end up converting the capacitors and inductors to, to imaginary numbers as well. And then we do a bunch of Kirchhoff's laws and stuff with imaginary numbers, because don't forget this is an imaginary number. And then we get an answer that's also going to be a phaser. But then when we write the answer back as a cosine again, we know the frequency is the same. And so we don't have to carry the frequency through the problem because we know what it is. It's the same as the source. All right? Um, this is the way you would write the phasor down, but just don't forget that it's really a shorthand way of saying 170 e to the j negative 40 degrees. You, you would uh, drive yourself crazy t uh, writing this down everywhere. e to the j is implied when you write it like this. This is 170 e to the j negative 40. This is the true math. This is how we're carrying it through our calculations as a shorthand notation. So you won't see this very much. You're going to see this all the time. All right, what if I wanted to say I had a current running around the circuit and it was 10 times the sine of 1000 T plus 20 degrees and I asked you, uh, that's amps, and I asked you write that as a phasor notation. All right, well, you would think it would be 10 at an angle of 20 degrees, but notice this is a sine. Everything we've done so far has been in terms of cosine and that's just convention. We write these these uh, signals as cosines. All right? A sine is clearly not the same as a cosine. It's a shifted version with respect to the cosine. So in order to write your phaser, you got to convert it to a cosine. You have to convert it to a cosine. And we've already said that um, sine and cosine are the same thing. They're just out of phase with one another. The way you would write this as a cosine is 10 times the cosine of 1000 T. And then you would have plus the 20 right here, that's, this is so far just the sine, but to make it a cosine, you have to subtract 90 degrees from it. That's probably worth you remembering. Anytime you have a sine, 